welcome back to the class on a electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles in the last lecture we have seen the how do you control the torque develop in induction motor by means of a direct rotor flux control in this lecture we are going to discuss about the indirect rotor flux orientation control of a three phase induction motor why should you go for this pattern means in case of a direct rotor flux orientation control it requires the all effect sensors which increase the cost of the drive as well as decreases the reliability of the drive also so we are going to estimate the rotor flux with the help of the slip speed of a induction motor once you know the slip speed of induction motor at a given load then we can estimate the what is the position of a rotor flux and we can maintain the rotor flux and rotor current perpendicular to get the maximum flux only when if we know the synchronous speed we know the slip speed for slip speed if we add the actual speed of a induction motor then we are getting the synchronous speed that we are representing with a omega star where theta r we can calculate it theta r equal to integral 0 to t omega star dt this is equal to 0 to t omega naught dt this is equal to 0 to t integral omega star dt plus theta naught where omega naught star and omega r star and omega naught is nothing but a reference synchronous speed reference slip speed omega naught is nothing but a speed of a induction motor where theta naught is the angular displacement of a rotor we can easily measure the angular displacement of a rotor with the help of the shaft position sensor the required value of the slip speed omega r star can be computed from the equation lambda r e equal to lambda dr e we know that i r e equal to 1 by l r into lambda d s e minus l m into i s e now we have to substitute this equation in a rotor voltage equation separate the real term and imaginary term we are getting the lambda d r e equal to 1 plus tau r p equal to l m i d s e omega r t tau r lambda d r e equal to l m i q s e now in this equation if you substitute the in place of omega r and lambda d r e and i q s e substitute the omega r star lambda r star and i q s e star and find the value of omega r star that is equal to l m by tau r into i q s e star by lambda r star again in this expression if you substitute the in place of lambda d r e and i d s e you substitute the lambda r star and i d s e star if you find the value of i d s e star then we are getting the value 1 plus tau p by l m lambda r star from the torque equation i q s e star equal to reference torque divided by k t into the reference value of the rotor flux now from the above equation now we are going to control the induction motor in a indirect method in direct method also we have taken the rotor flux and torque as a reference values this rotor flux we are multiply with the tau r by l m and also will be multiply with a p plus 1 by tau r which gives the i d s e star nothing but a reference value of a stator current and a d component now the reference value of torque is multiply with the 1 by k t into lambda r star which gives the i q s e star here what we have taken the one input here we have taken the another input both dividing and multiplying with 1 by p gives the theta star that we are adding to the theta naught which is given by the position sensor which is attached to the rotor of a induction motor that is theta naught now this angle we are using to convert these two values into the dq components in a stator frame this is the excitation frame this is the stator frame so we are getting the value i d s s star i q s s star 
again we are converting these two values into the ABC frame where we can get the IAS star and IBS star and ICS. Now oh, these values we are comparing with the actual currents taken by the induction motor. The error in current will be given to the PA controller where the PA controller will be generating a reference voltage to the PWM technique. In PWM technique, the reference voltage will be compared with a triangular carrier signal. So, the pulses will be generated to the three phase inverter. So, the required voltage will be applied to the induction motor to meet the required torque that is a T star. Three phase inverter has an input of DC source that we have represented here. In case of an indirect rotor flux control of induction motor, it is highly depending upon the rotor parameters, where the rotor parameters are strongly depending upon the operating point of the induction motor. The requirement that is difficult to satisfy the practical. On the other hand, the major advantage of such a system is that standard motor can be used whose rotor portion is easily measured by the external sensors. Since the control scheme presented here constitutes an extension of the scalar torque control of induction motor, the reference flux and torque value must be satisfied the safe operating region of a induction motor. In this manner, we can control the torque developed in a three phase induction motor in a indirect rotor flux control. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer the question.